My dad is like Spiderman. He swings on ropes around big towers. Rigor is the most dangerous profession in the world. There are many safety challenges. Risks are present in every part of this work. Always remember, nothing is more important than the safety of you and your team. Sweetheart, be careful at work. Promise me you will come home safe. We love you. Dad, come home soon. Okay. Before leaving for the site, the leader must lead the team through the EHS preparation check to make sure all PPE and facilities are complete without missing. The team must check all personal protective equipment (PPE), tools, facilities, qualifications, and documents, and carry out vehicle safety checks. Our job today is to hoist and install the antenna, RRU, and the retaining pole. All team members check their own PPE. Riggers check their full body harnesses. Double lanyards. Positioning lanyards. Safety gloves. Tool pouches. And their helmets. Slingers check their helmets. And their anti-skid safety gloves. The team leader records the check results on the ISDP Smart QC app. The team must have all the required facilities and tool sets, which must comply with the safety and quality standards. All facilities must be free from damage and dirt. Metal parts must not be rusted, cracked, bent, or broken. The team leader checks the qualifications of every team member. Only qualified workers may work for Huawei business. Riggers, electricians, and first aid officers must be certified by an independent authority, and everyone of the team must hold a Huawei EHS certificate, such as safety passport. The team leader explains the locations of the towers and the nearest hospital, so that they can get medical support in the event of an accident. Helmets must include an impact-absorbing liner, a chin strap, and an adjustable headband. Safety shoes must be safe with anti-skid soles. Ordinary shoes, sneakers, or flip-flops must not be worn on site. Use a full-body harness rather than a safety belt or half-body harness. Only a full body harness can protect the rigger's whole body. Fire extinguishers must be undamaged and fully pressurized. They should be regularly maintained to make sure they function properly. Do not use a lighter in place of a proper heat gun. Make sure all power cables on tools are in perfect conditions. Do not use cutters with rusted or unretractable blades. Do not use rusty or damaged pulleys. All PPE must comply with the local safety standards and EN standard. After the EHS checks, the team leader calls Huawei site engineer or regional project manager and tells them that the checks are complete and they are ready to leave for the site. The driver must carry out the vehicle safety checks himself to ensure. The seat belts are functioning properly. The parking lights, hazard lights, and indicators are working normally. The brake lights are working. The hazard lights are working. An onboard diagnostics (OBD) or GPS device is installed in the vehicle. A sign of EHS absolute rules for driving safety is posted in the vehicle. The mandatory insurance sticker is visible. The vehicle is regularly maintained. 
the dashboard indicators are normal and there is enough fuel for the vehicle. And the tires are in good conditions with normal pressure and without abnormal wear. Then, the team leader records the vehicle check results in the ISDP SmartQC app. The team put their PPE, tools, and facilities into the vehicle. Everyone must wear seat belts. You cannot drive without wearing seat belts. Vehicle can only departure after everyone wears seat belts, includes front seats and rear seats. Drivers must not use handheld phones while driving. If you must answer a call, use a Bluetooth headset or put the call on speaker. If possible, pull over to the side of the road before answering a call. Drivers must not drive when fatigued. They must stop for rest at a safe place every four hours of driving or whenever they feel tired. Drivers must not drive faster than the speed limit. If the OBD system detects that a vehicle is breaking the speed limit, an OBD background monitoring assistant will call the driver's phone, warning him about the speeding. Number 9134. Your worker is traveling too fast. Slow down, please. Okay, thanks for the warning. I am slowing down. Okay, I can see your speed coming down now. Thank you. EHS risk assessments are needed for sites in remote areas. Teams must not work in poor weather, thunderstorms, snow, lightning, and winds of level 6 or higher. The team leader and one or two team members check EHS conditions at the construction site. The team leader allocates risk assessment tasks properly beforehand. They need to inspect the terrain, the equipment room, the tower structure, and the surrounding area for dangerous creatures such as snakes or wild bees. Try to stay clear of the snake if you find one at the site. If needed, call the authorities and start to work only after they take the snake away from the site. If a wild bee's nest is found, the team should take care not to disturb it. Everyone should stay well clear of the nest. The team leader records the check results on the ISDP Smart QC app and call the authorities to deal with the bees. The team can start work only after the authorities remove the bee nest. Before they begin work, the team shall put noticeable EHS warning signs at the site and set up warning tapes around the site. The EHS warning signs shall specify PPE for working on the ground, Huawei's EHS absolute rules, emergency contact numbers, general PPE for working at height, and specific PPE for riggers. The team leader gives EHS instructions and assigns tasks to all of the team members before they set to work. Riggers put on the PPE. They shall wear the full body harness first. Tie up the tool pouch to the waist. and then fasten all safety buckles. The safety belt should be neither too tight nor too loose. Rigger should be able to slip one hand between the body and the belt. Riggers must wear their anti-skid gloves and helmets, fasten the chin strap, and tighten the headband. If they are working in direct sunlight, they should also wear sunglasses. Riggers should clip on their lanyard. To the D-ring on the back of their harness.
They also need to check each other's PPE, make sure all buckles are fastened and carabiners locked, and that the lanyard hooks are deadlocked. He once again checks their qualifications and Huawei training certificates and uploads photos of the certificates to the ISDP SmartQC app. He checks the PPE on slingers. Finally, he reminds everyone of key safety issues. can quickly climb the tower in safety. In some cases, riggers may have to install antennas without an aerial work platform because the tower was not properly designed. If a rigger needs to move right and left and has no proper support to attach to, set up a horizontal line and attach the lanyard to it for fall protection. In this case, the rigger needs to make sure at least one hook of the lanyard is always anchored to the tower. Measure the correct length of line between two safe anchorage points. This line will offer fall protection when riggers move horizontally on the tower. Attach the full body harness to the line with a positioning or double lanyard. This can provide the fall protection. Always use the lanyard properly. The hooks must be anchored to two different positions, above where you are working. Do not anchor the hooks to the same position of the tower. If the tower breaks at this point, you could fall. Do not anchor the hooks to positions below where you are, because this means you will fall further and could be hurt. Falling from height without any protection can be fatal. You must not work at height without safety equipment. No one may enter the restricted area around the tower when riggers are working at height. If anyone enters the area, the team leader should stop them and teach them the safety regulations. If a tool, especially a pulley, falls from the tower, anyone below could be easily hurt or even killed. This is Huawei approved method for anchoring hoisting ropes. As the pole is composed of several parts assembled together and its support arms are quite heavy, the hoisting rope is attached to both upper and lower support arms. Use a hook to connect the hoisting rope to the pole. Fix the tow rope.
The team leader directs hoisting on the ground and uses a walkie-talkie to communicate with riggers at height. When the pole is lifted up, two slingers pull the hoisting rope together. When the pole reaches the right height for installation, the two workers tie the hoisting rope to the tower leg or other convenient anchor. Here is a comparison between basic hoisting and safe hoisting. In the basic plan, if the workers let go of the rope, the RRU falls to the ground. With a safe hoisting setup, if the rope is let go, a fall arrestor locks the rope up, so the RRU does not fall. One, anchor the upper end of the rope to a position higher than the fixed pulley. Two, anchor the lower end of the rope, or hold the rope at an angle away from the tower. In this way, the object can be lifted along the fall arrestor rope. An antenna is lifted in the same After the antenna is installed, start to hoist and install the RRU. Riggers on the tower must not lean forward to grab a rope with their hands or feet. This could cause them to fall. If the RRU is hoisted without a tow rope, it may easily collide with a tower or other devices installed on the tower. Do not stand directly under the RRU when it is suspended in the air. Do not untie the hoisting rope until the RRU is fastened to the tower. Otherwise, the RRU may fall. Tools without leashes to prevent them falling. Tools safely leashed. Use the double lanyard to climb steadily down from the tower. Use the vertical lifeline to climb steadily down from the tower. My dad is a big hero to me.